Hello everyone and welcome again to Empire State Weekly. I'm Tim Lake in Albany. Well, things got really heated at times between Governor Cuomo and Cynthia Nixon in their first and their only debate before this month's Democratic primary election for governor. Now, Cuomo looking to lock up a third term this fall and Nixon, the former Sex and the City actress who's running to his left, took turns bashing each other. But it was Nixon who seemed to get underneath the governor's skin on a handful of topics. Watch. Yeah, Excuse me. Wow, the insults and interruptions aside, there were plenty of big issues facing New York that the two discussed during their nearly hour-long debate. Empire State Weekly Capital correspondent Morgan Mackay was at Hofstra University for the big event. Go State Weekly. All right, thank you, Morgan. Now, the two candidates were also asked about their plans to tackle high-profile statewide issues like one we have spent a lot of time talking about right here on Empire State Weekly political corruption. Here's my I'm too close to him. Now that comment was a direct reference to Governor Cuomo's former aide, Joe Percoco, who was convicted on corruption charges earlier this year. Cuomo has said he had no knowledge of the crimes and was never implicated. But Nixon doesn't buy that. Either. No idea about it. Now, another big issue where the two disagree is on health care in New York State, especially after Nixon proposed that the state switch to a Medicare for all type of system. We can in is hard to do. All right, more on this debate in just a moment. But first, the two candidates running for lieutenant governor also squared off in a debate the same night. And things got a little interesting when New York City Councilman Jamani Williams described Kathy Hochul's role as lieutenant governor in a not so flattering way. I believe it's funny. All right, so even some controversy in that race as well. The most recent polling data that we have on this race, though, shows that it is up in the air with many voters still undecided on this. And it's been a week full of debates. The four Democratic candidates for attorney general also facing off in their own debates here in New York. Letitia James, Sean Patrick Maloney, Zephyr Teachout, and Licia Eve all talking about their independence from Governor Cuomo, rooting out corruption, the role of money in public campaigns and criminal justice reform. Now, the winner of this month's Democratic primary will be facing Republican Keith Wofford in the general election for attorney general. Meanwhile, Maloney's simultaneous campaigns for attorney general and re-election to Congress have survived a court challenge. The state court of appeals deciding not to hear an appeal after a lower court ruled that Maloney can decline his nomination to run for re-election to Congress if he wins the Democratic nomination for attorney general. As for those congressional races, two new polls are shedding some light on the fates of three of New York's Republican lawmakers who are hoping now to hang on to their congressional seats. A Siena College poll is showing that Republican incumbent John Katko with a 15-point lead over Democratic challenger Dana Balter. This is in New York's 24th congressional district, and that includes parts of the Lake Ontario shoreline and the Finger Lakes. Also, the news isn't as good for Republican Congresswoman Claudia Tenney in the 22nd district around Utica. Another Siena poll now shows Tenney down two points to Democratic challenger Anthony Brindisi in what's now being viewed as a toss-up race. Tenney is hoping that President Trump's high-profile visit and endorsement can help push her over the top in November's general election. And a third Siena poll is more evidence that the 19th Congressional District is also too close to call, with incumbent Republican John Faso holding on to a five-point lead now over Democratic challenger Antonio Delgado. This district covers large areas of the Mid-Hudson Valley into the Catskills and is seen by many as a key swing district this fall in the elections. Well, if you think we're done talking about the debates and the upcoming primary, well, think again. Coming up, we're going to dive deep into the highly contentious debate between Governor Cuomo and Cynthia Nixon, and we'll see what it means for that pivotal party election. And of course, if you have a comment or a story idea, let us know about it. You can email Empire State Weekly, and you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. Well, it has certainly been another busy week in New York State politics, and now that you've got all the information you need, time to find out what it means. Joining us now is Jennifer Wilson, the Program and Policy Director of the League of Women Voters, and of course our weekly contributor, WGY Radio's Diane Donato. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thanks Absolutely. for having me. We have said all along the one and only debate for the Democratic primary. Why 
haven't we seen more debates so we can learn more information about the candidates? You know, it just seems to be a trend in politics now is candidates sort of steering away from debates. I mean, it puts them at risk of maybe saying the wrong thing and then the media harping on that for the rest of their just don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, though, because uh, we've heard that Cuomo doesn't like to debate. If He's not a fan of it, and he uh, creates situations where he puts it off and puts it off and puts it off, and then he does it. I think this debate went well for him, and mm. I think afterwards he might have been saying, why didn't I do this much sooner? Because it helped expose him to two different audiences that he really wanted to talk to. One was the uh, liberal end of the Democratic Party that she's already drawn, so those were the people who were turning in, or tuning in. Mm -hmm. So he benefited from being able to have a platform and to address them directly on so many of the issues they cared about. And he also benefited from a national audience because Cynthia Nixon is a national draw. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think afterwards, mm -hmm. since it went fairly well for him, he must have been saying, let's do more of those. Mm. Now, uh, he started off, though, actually debating President Trump, which was interesting, and she kept trying to turn the focus back to her as his opponent. Do you think that strategy uh, wore down as the, bait, as the debate went on? Yeah, I think a lot of it nothing. It may be understandable, though, as a New York City uh, television station, so they were focused on New York City issues, but yeah, there, there weren't many upstate issues. Were there, there were quite a few with the MTA uh, talking about that. There were a couple that gave a quick mention or two to uh, the SAFE Act mm. uh, are often overlooked. And this is probably a good time to point out that you have just released your voter guide. Yes. And, and there's a ton of candidates and a ton of races, over 300 races statewide. So where do I find the voter's guide? VotingNewYork.org. <laughs> and Voting New York is spelled out. So you have to spell the whole word, but VotingNewYork.org, and you can find all that information. Uh, the New York State Fair is about to wrap up here. You had a uh, booth set up there with the intent of trying to get people to register. Mm -hmm. And we talked to you a bit earlier about this. What did you find as you canvassed people across the state who came into the fair? You know, it's odd because we had a booth during the presence them to vote this year, which we've never had before, and it's all quite right, well, frustrating. Let's, well, let's talk about that, upstate versus downstate. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't seem like we've seen a lot of on-the-ground campaigning uh, I saw one report, I think it came from a newspaper in the Adirondacks, where it just basically said that Nixon's hit two or three cities along the thruway, and that's about it. And, and what about Governor Cuomo? Has he spent a lot of time on the ground upstate campaigning? No, I don't think I've seen a lot of campaigning overall. I know uh, Cynthia Nixon's been in Albany. She's in Schenectady. Uh, this weekend. It's, it makes it very frustrating yeah. for voters as well. All right, well, we're about to, uh, to wrap up here one more time. If I want that voter's guide, which is critical to helping me vote, where do I find it? It's votingnewyork.org. Okay. Jennifer Wilson from the League of Women Voters, thank you very much for joining us. And of course, Diane as well. Well, coming up next, allegations of sexual abuse in the Catholic Church and one of New York's neighbors could lead to a statewide investigation right here in our state. What a top prosecutor in a large New York county is now saying about the chances of that happening. And of course, if you have a comment or a story idea, let us know about it. You can email Empire State Weekly and you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. Welcome back to Empire State Weekly. I'm Tim Lake in Albany. An investigation into allegations of sexual abuse in the Catholic Church could soon move from focusing on just one county to the entire state. That's according to the Erie County District Attorney. There is going to be with the Attorney General's office. Now, Attorney General Barbara Underwood has reached out to the DAs of all 62 New York counties about starting a joint investigation of alleged sexual abuse and cover-ups in the Catholic Church. And this comes after allegations of abuse against the Archdiocese of Buffalo and a similar grand jury probe in Pittsburgh. New York State is beginning the process of finding out if people here would support legal recreational marijuana. Coming up, who's now leading the charge to see if that's what people really want or if New York is not quite ready for marijuana like neighboring states and Canada. And if you have a comment or a story idea, let us know about it. You can email Empire State Weekly and you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. 
The New York State Assembly is now looking for input on potentially legalizing recreational marijuana. They're going to have four legislative hearings later on this fall. Now, Assemblywoman Crystal Peoples-Stokes, who's on the governor's work group to study this issue, is sponsoring a bill to regulate and then tax the adult use of recreational marijuana. And it comes after the state health department concluded that the positive impacts of legalizing and regulating recreational marijuana outweigh the potential negative impacts. The work group is also holding 15 listening sessions around the state through next month so you can make your voice heard on this matter as well. And of course, we'll continue following this important story right here on Empire State Weekly. So for now, for all of us here on Empire State Weekly, I'm Tim Lake in Albany. We'll see you right back here next week. And don't forget, you can watch Empire State Weekly all over New York State. Here's the full schedule of Empire State Weekly on 10 New York TV stations, including WIVB News 4 Buffalo.